Well, hello friends. My name is Amy Rebecca and Happy New Year. <sighs> we made it. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas and that you enjoyed your festive festivities. Personally, I had a really chilled Christmas and I loved it. I threw my phone in a drawer, just disconnected from the world like a hermit. And now I feel refreshed, revived and ready for 2021. So today's video is one that a lot of us, including myself, have been really looking forward to and really excited to find out the results of because today I'm going to be breaking down all of the numbers from my 2020 no buy year. It's a lot of spreadsheets, it's a lot of facts and figures and lots of information. My inner nude is screaming right now. For any of you out there who are thinking of starting a no buy year in 2021, I hope that these numbers and figures can inspire you and motivate you because it's a great challenge. It's a weirdly fun thing to do. And if you want any more inspiration, I will link my no buy year playlist in the description box down below, along with a link to our no buy year Facebook group, because it's nice to have a sense of community when you're doing something like this, so that you have support and people to talk to. Okay. So are you ready for this? So let's start by talking about what I spent in 2020 because if you guys have been following me for the last year on this no buy you journey, then you'll know at the end of every month, I give you a rundown of what I spent. So I was able to tally all of that up, put it into kind of more broad categories and see exactly where my money went this year. Are you ready? Some of it's shameful, okay? So the category where I spent the most amount of money in 2020 was what I called days out. That was just going out with friends or family, doing different kinds of activities, um, even having short breaks away overnight. Although I didn't get to do a lot of that in 2020 because COVID. And I spent £736.57 on that, which I love. I love that that's where most of my money went. Most of my money went on going out and enjoying my life. The next biggest category was gifts, and I spent £526.99 on those. Then was groceries. I was... Uh, 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 I spent £514.24 on groceries this year, which I think is really good going. Also, I add out a lot, so maybe swings and roundabouts. Okay, uh, yeah, speaking of, the next biggest category was takeaway food, which over the course of the year, I spent £435.55. So yeah, that goes some way to explain why my grocery bill was so low. I just really like pizza. Next biggest category was drinks. And I kind of feel like I need to put a little caveat or an explanation here because it's not great if the thing you've spent most of your money on in the year is alcohol. But when I say drinks, I mean like going out for cocktails with my friends and that might also include food or that might also include the transport there and back, that kind of thing. So it's not purely just drinks. So there were a lot of drinks. Um, and that was £419.98. Necessities, including things like shampoo, conditioner, cleaning supplies, boring stuff like that, £361.74. Luxury services, like getting my hair done, getting my nails done, having the cleaner in Bahrain come clean my apartment, because I just didn't want to do that, was £334.48. Eating out, £304.76. I don't like to cook. I spent £240 on counselling services this year for my mental health, £151.21 on arts and crafts. That was where 2020 really took a turn for me and I was like, hey, I may as well just go out and spend all my money on wool. My Spotify membership cost me £119.88. I spent £113.90 on miscellaneous things like petrol, parking, random junk. £102.15 on makeup, which I feel really good about and I'm going to explain why when we talk about my empties. Like that is a really good solid number for me. I donated £45.86 to charity. I did spend £45 on a new waterproof coat because um, I was wet and cold. I spent £42.39 on utilities because the majority of that was covered under my rent anyway. Um, I spent £36.50 on dance classes, £29 on lottery tickets, really, and £28.39 on takeaway coffees. One thing I will say is that this total that I'm going to give you does not include my rent, it does not include my Uber, 
and it doesn't include any like travel although I didn't do a lot of that but those expenses came out of different pots of money and it's kind of confusing but I'm gonna link my budgeting uh, video down below if you want to find out how I keep my money separate and budget more effectively but just for like day-to-day -day spending on the categories that we've run through I spent a grand total of I could never be a drummer. £4,588.59. I think that's pretty good. Like really, in a whole year. So to put that into perspective for you guys, I want to share how much additional money I saved during my no buy year. I've mentioned this before, but sometimes in these videos, people come out and say, I saved $30,000, $20,000, dollars $10,000 during my no buy year. And I'm not saying they're lying. I'm just wondering, how much of that was actually down to the no buyer? Like, you know what I mean? Whereas I've done a direct comparison with previous years to see how much additional I've saved as a result of this. I saved an additional £1,411.41 just as a result of implementing these no buyer rules. And I think that's really good because I'm a pretty strict budgeter anyway, feeling super good about that. Now I want to take a second to talk about my empties because if you guys have been following my empties videos project pan you know that I've been trying really hard to use up as much stuff as possible throughout 2020 and this is how that went. It's a real moment. I used up 26 makeup products, 21 skincare products, 19 hair care products, 48 general cosmetics products, which would be more like body lotions, um, deodorant, toothpaste, um, and 28 sample products, which brings my total to 142 cosmetics products that I used up in one year. But the total value of those products was £938.67 almost a thousand pounds worth of product but not only that the total that I spent in 2020 replacing um, cosmetics items that had run out I spent £176.59 altogether on those cosmetics items which means I used up £762.08 of cosmetics, makeup, hair care, skin care that was just in my home already. And if that doesn't speak to consumer culture, then I don't know what does. 762 pound and eight pence of stuff that was just lying around my home, not being used, and that if I hadn't done this no buy you, probably would have continued not being used. Sorry about this crazy lighting, by the way, but it's the sky. It's doing some stuff. The last thing that I thought that maybe you guys would wanna know was, where did I put it? I have so many spreadsheets open on my computer right now. Um, oh, candles. So I didn't buy any candles in 2020 and will not need to buy any candles for a while because I have a lot, but I used up 97 pound 91 pence worth of candles. I just had like a hundred pounds worth of candles sitting in a drawer. I'm judging my old self so hard right now. So I hope that these numbers, if you guys are thinking of doing a no buy you, I hope that they really inspire you. I do plan on making more low buy you content in 2021. If you would like to see what my new rules are gonna be for 2021 with regards to like buying new stuff, what am I gonna buy, what am I not gonna buy, let me know if you wanna see that and I will definitely make a video for you. But until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember that I love you all so much and I will see you all soon. Bye.